Okay, welcome back. This is part seven of our series where we show you how to use this wonderful free software called LabVIEW. And LabVIEW allows you to do data acquisition and control and design of control systems that are used in many industries around the world. Very popular software. And again, it's free for non-commercial use. And it's a great way to learn about engineering and control systems and data acquisition, which is used in virtually every industry around the world. And we also did a brief series talking about what are control systems, how do they work, some of the very basics. I encourage you to look at that. And previously in the series, we talked about what is LabVIEW, how does it work. We talked about how do you download and install it for free. We also talked about how to set it up and configure it so that you can work with this very simple Arduino, which is a very inexpensive data acquisition device. We also showed you how to configure it to work with a commercial industrial device called the LabJack, which is very similar to an Arduino, but it's a higher end commercial device. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to convert your what you call VI or virtual instrument project that you see here, which communicates with this Arduino and reads data every, in this case, every tenth of a second and plots it in real time on this chart. We showed how to do this previously in the other videos in this series. And we're going to show you in this video how to take this VI project and convert it to a Windows.exe executable application. And it's really wonderful with LabVIEW that you can do this for free with this free community version of LabVIEW. Unlike, I believe, MATLAB or Simulink, which is a similar type of software, you need to have the paid commercial license for Simulink. In this case, you can do it for free. So it's really nice. You can convert this application into a executable, copy it to a thumb drive, move it to another computer, and do data acquisition and control on your other computer. So let's see how we can convert this simple VI into an executable. Well, as we talked about in the previous video in this series, one of the important things about it is making sure that you have designed this application so that it is transportable, which means that when you move this application to another computer, you want to make sure that you allow for the fact that the other computer and the other systems on that other computer might be a little bit different or very different. So what you have to do is we show in this uh, front panel or control panel for this application, you have to give the user on the other computer control so they can say, for example, if I've got an Arduino or a data acquisition device on the other computer that's not connected to the default serial port that we've configured for this computer, you need to give the, the user on the other computer the ability to change the serial port and maybe the analog channel number that you're reading from the other data acquisition device. So you want to make sure that you've got controls on your front panel so that it becomes a transportable application. That's really important because, you know, it's, it's very easy when you're writing an application for a computer to assume that all you need is a configuration for that computer. But no, when you move it to another computer, you're going to need to be able to be flexible so that it can manage the other computer. And that even comes down to things like if you're moving it to a laptop with a lower resolution, you want to make sure that the user interface controls are the right size and in the right position. So it's really important that you design your application with that in mind. Now, the next thing you need to be aware of is if you're going to transport this as an executable, you need to have installed on each computer, each remote computer, what's called the LabVIEW Runtime Engine. And again, that's a free piece of software, but you need to make sure that you have that installed before you run your executables on remote computers. And to go there, you can just search for LabVIEW Runtime Engine, and this gives you an explanation of how to install it. So we're not going to go through this in detail, but you can nationalinstruments.com downloads. You can run it just using this. You can use the NI Package Manager we've talked about. Uh, but basically, just go through for each computer. Go through and make sure that you've installed this LabVIEW Runtime Engine so that you can run these LabVIEW applications. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assume you've got a VI, one or more VI projects ready to convert into an executable. 
So how do we go through and convert this into an executable? Well, under project, you can go and you can create a new project. Now, there's a difference between a basic VI and a project. And the difference is if you're familiar with, for example, Visual Studio, you've got a project and a solution and that's kind of like this VI, where you've got your VI, but that can reside inside a project. And in order to convert this to an application, an EXE, you're going to have to create a project that contains this VI. So what you can do is you can go project, create project, and it will give you this create project interface and you can choose blank project and then finish. And what it says, and this is a very important dialogue, it says you have one or more VIs open in the main application instance. Do you want to add the open VIs to the new project? And what that's saying is this VI that we have here, we want to convert this to an EXE, so we want to include this in the project because if it's included in the project, then we can create an executable. So we're, we'll say add, and it will go through, and it will bring up this, what's called the Project Explorer. And again, if you've worked in Visual Studio, this may look like a Solution Explorer, where you've got the components of your project or solution. And here we've got a new project called Untitled Project, and it has added this Arduino Analog Read.vi, which is basically this virtual instrument that we've created. So now we are pretty much all set to go to create an executable. So to create an executable from this project, we go to Build Specifications, right-click, and say New, and you've got a list of things you can create. We're going to create a new application, .exe. And what this will do is bring up another dialog, and the first thing it says, you must save the project before you create a Build Specification. Do you want to save the project? Yes, we do. So we'll automatically save it, and it will bring up a dialog that says, okay, name the project. So we will say Arduino test, and it will create a .lv proj. So before they were .vi, virtual instrument. Now it's a complete project called .lv proj. And now we've got the My Application Properties, where we can specify what we want to include in order to make the executable. So we can give it a name. Um, we want the target file name. I'm just going to leave it as application.exe. And it's going to be in this destination directory that we can change. But it's basically users, documents, lab view data, builds. And it's under the builds folder rather than projects as we had before. Called it Arduino test and my application. That's where the executable is going to reside. And then we can say source files. We want this Arduino analog read.vi to be included as the startup VI. So we will select that, hit arrow, and that will be the startup VI. And once we've got that, we can hit OK, or we could have changed some of the other things, but we're going to start by just using the default and say build all, and it will initialize the build. This could take several minutes. In our case, it won't. And it says the build is complete. You can locate the build at users, documents, lab view data, builds, Arduino test, and my application. So here we are at that location, this PC, documents, lab view data, builds, Arduino test, and my application. If we double click, we can see we've got application.exe, and we've got a couple other files that go with it in, in INI, configuration settings, and in aliases. So what we can do is we can take that folder, that My Application folder, copy it, paste it to a thumb drive or whatever, and bring that over to another computer and run it. So we'll hit Done, and here we've got our Project Explorer. And this is really important aspect of your project. But again, it's very much like a Visual Studio Solution Explorer. So if we go back to that executable folder where we've got my application.exe and we double click and run it, you can see it brings up the front panel of our application. Now keep in mind, 
Uh, previously in our VI project, we could go to window and open up the block diagram. However, this doesn't have the block diagram. This is just the executable with the front panel. So this is all the user has is this front panel display, which again is why it's important to make sure that you've got all the correct controls so the user can actually access the functionality of the application. So we've got file, uh, edit, operate, tools, not much, window, you can set it to full size, but really this is the application, the executable that you can run on, on any other computer as long as they've got the runtime installed. Now also keep in mind as we start this up, this application, it immediately starts running. You can see it's already trying to grab data from the Arduino. So in real time, it's giving you a graph and it's going to start scrolling here. So when the user starts it, it will automatically start running. So you might think about maybe adding some other controls that say, hey, wait a minute, pause until I tell it to start running and then allow it to stop and maybe change some things. Maybe you want to change some scaling. So just keep that in mind if you're going to have an um, application that can run on other computers. You're going to want to think about what controls you're going to add to this. So that's about it um, for how to create a very simple EXE from your VI from LabVIEW. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.